Nitanandam guys, welcome back to another episode of this most interesting series, the Guru-Disciple Relationship. I welcome you all with my love and respects and the divine blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam. In today's episode, I wanted to put your focus on one very important thing that we truly cognize, especially at this time, at this age. Um, basically, I'm, I was born in Canada and America in general, North America, it started, I guess, with the USA. But this whole idea that glorifying the, um, the you, you can make it. See, basically, when people were mainly in Europe and they started to migrate towards America, the American dream was the main motivation why people wanted you know to go there so they can start a new life they can make success happen for themselves so this idea that glorifying the individual who is making it happen this idea um, goes or becomes a very big obstacle into the manifestation of um, of your enlightenment or of the ultimate in your life, the ultimate fulfillment, ultimately. Um, in a previous video, I was talking about how the I, the individual experience, the identity is rooted in powerlessness. So then again, one of the things what I'm seeing is that it is very or I should say it is challenging in to bring forward this idea of surrendering to the Guru, especially in the West, because of this thought current that is the foundation of a lot of understandings that we've heard, uh, that we got inspired about, and um, that we grew up with. And that is, that is something that becomes an obstacle towards uh, surrendering to the Guru or even cherishing the idea that the guru-disciple relationship is a relationship that is uh, worthy of having and ultimately the only relationship that is worthy of having and I'll have to explain why in uh, another episode perhaps but this, uh, this experience, this understanding that glorifying the individual because he made it is, go is not helping us, it is strengthening the identity that we have which is rooted in powerlessness and which does not allow us to uh, cognize ourselves bigger than life. In one of the satsangs, this course that Swamji gave when I did my inner awakening in 2014 uh, before uh, becoming a disciple of His Divine Holiness Bhagwan Shinityanda Paramashivam was a, he gave a satsang on what is the DNA of enlightenment? And it's a very powerful satsang. Swamiji was saying that he analyzed and he scanned all the various masters of the past who got the ultimate experience, not the partial experience, but the ultimate experience and got settled and rooted in that ultimate experience. And he was saying that the DNA of enlightenment is cognizing yourself bigger than everything that you know. So the identity it is impossible for the identity to cognize itself bigger than everything that is known. Because in order to do that, you have to be in a space of ultimate powerfulness, which is not possible for an identity which is rooted in powerlessness. Only if we discard the identity and we imbibe the blessing or the guy, um, yeah, the blessing of the Guru and the initiation of the Guru, then only that space of powerfulness can be bestowed and we can firmly establish ourselves into that experience and start to operate with this body from that experience, from the space of gratitude towards the Guru because he has uh, gifted that experience to us. So uh, that I, I, I strongly believe that this a glorification of the individual, which is the foundation of the American dream, is one of the biggest obstacles and perhaps um, one of the, if not the biggest reason of the suffering of, um, of us nowadays, the suffering from boredom, from tiredness, 
from lack of enthusiasm, from lack of persistence, lack of stability. Um, a lot of things are happening now where the entertainment industry, for instance, is constantly working to keep people engaged because people, they just can't sit still. And to be engaged, you need to constantly reinvent and come up with some new ways to keep your mind engaged, uh, which is not helping anybody to move forward. It is not giving any form of fulfillment. It is just a form of instant gratification, which is not fulfilling. So this very glorification of the uh, individual is, um, as far as I'm concerned, is really something that I'm seeing being one of the biggest obstacles towards the surrender of the Guru. Even if uh, we surrender, we will surrender partially because this cognition is still alive in us and until we discard this cognition, it will be impossible for us to experience the true surrender, to experience the true bhakti, the true devotion and align to the Guru's words so that we can merge into Him um, into that experience of Paramashivoham, of Paramashivatwa, the space of Paramashivatwa, and start to radiate the ultimate. So that's something I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, put your comments below if you have any questions, if you have any comments. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like. And I'll see you guys in another episode. If I, uh, I, have, ni if I have comments, I'll definitely use perhaps the question, the doubts, or the criticism that is made in the comments to uh, make another episode and to bring more clarity and answer these doubts and help to firmly um, establish the importance of the guru-disciple relationship in one's life. Whether it is to manifest the enlightenment, health, wealth, fulfillment, anything, the guru-disciple relationship is mandatory because it bestows the space of powerfulness. So with this, I'll see you guys in another episode. Nityananda.